Good morning. This is Minister Nehemiah Newman coming to you from Shady Dale Church of God, 4626 Tronwood Street, Houston, Texas, 77016, where Darius Miller is the pastor, and I'm the Sunday School Superintendent, and I will be bringing a lesson this morning. So let's get started. Before we go to the lesson, let's acknowledge God, most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father. Come this morning, dear Lord, with a heart of thanks and praise. Grateful and thankful, dear Lord, that you allow me to see another day. Gave me one more opportunity, dear Lord, to be able to say thank you. One more opportunity to praise you, O oh, Heavenly Father, and give you honor and glory and thanks. Just thank you again this morning for what you've done for me thus far. Thank you for just waking me again this morning, holding my right mind. Oh Lord, with a portion of my health and strength. Dear Lord, you picked me up this morning, put me on my feet, and started me on my way. All the basic necessities that you said you would supply was all on point, dear Lord. And I'm just grateful and thankful this morning, dear Lord. Thank you for that in here and disturbing phone calls over the course of the night to this, to this hour. And I'm grateful and thankful, dear Lord. I ask you to continue to bless my family members. Bless each and every one of them, dear Lord. Bless each and every one of them's household. Dear Lord, I ask you to just bless my church, my church family. Bless them this morning. Bless every one of those households this morning. Bless the pastor, first lady this morning. Oh, Lord. And, and Lord, I'm just thankful and grateful this morning, dear Lord. Let's see one more day. And Lord, I ask you to just bless the Sunday school teacher this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, give more wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your word. Bless the Sunday school this morning. Oh, Lord, when all the Sunday school have went forth, I pray, dear Lord, that somebody that was listening. In the background, dear Lord, or just looking on, may get some out the lesson this morning that will change their lives forever. Now be with me in Jesus' name, I ask you. Okay, this September 12th, 2021, week two of our lesson. And I always like to say before I get started that we need to redeem our time. Because the days are evil and time is short. Look at this year. This year is almost through. Probably got a quarter of a way to go. And this year will be gone. So we see our time ain't waiting on us. So we need to make sure we're redeeming our time. And I always like to say redeeming our time with, with love. Sharing love with one another. You know, not sharing love just with the one that loves us but share love with everyone. The scripture says, if you see your enemy thirsty, give him some drink. If he's hungry, give him something to eat. So we need to be about our father's business. Like I say again, all the way, I see it. It's through love. Okay, let's get started. Look at our topic this morning. Dancing before the ark. What studies we gonna be, be talking about? Celebration of great events in our lives can be diverse in form and include various actions. King David expressed his joy and celebration of God by leading God's people into music and dance. What topics are we gonna to be talking about today? The ark of the covenant. God's presence and praising God. Okay, let's look at our Bible background and see what our Bible background is saying. Citizens of modern nations are accustomed to the legal separation of church and state government. The relationship between religious and government in the ancient world different markedly formed that this modern understanding. The range of an ancient king, whether in Israel or any neighboring country, needed the support of the priests and the public religious symbol on which the priests were custom. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, the Ark of the Covenant suddenly became the focus of David's attention. For 20 and 20 and more years, nobody in Israel seemed to have even have given much thought to the most 
to this most sacred and powerful of Israel's religious symbol. The ark held the tablet of the commandments. On top of the ark was the mercy seat, where abided the very presence of God. When carried into battle on God's authorization, the ark guaranteed his a victory over the enemy. As such, it was connected Israel's presence to the glorious day of the past when God abided among the covenant people. Where the ark was, the Lord God was. David had established his capital at the old Jewish site, site of, of Jerusalem, which this natural site held certain military uh, political advantage. It also had some disadvantages. The principal shortcoming was that it lacked any religious significance in Israel memory. Many of part of religious shrines dotted the countryside, place associated with revelation of God or memory of his act. No such memory was associated with Jerusalem. And that absence created a potential weakness in David's rule. He could overcome that vulnerability, however, by moving the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of, the, of his new capital, moving the Ark to his new capital, and also, and he and, and so he did. David combined political shrewdness and sincerely faith in a remarkable pragmatic manner. He wanted and likely needed the ark in, in Jerusalem in order to maintain his royal power. But at the same time, the genuine love, the Lord, and was grateful for God's presence among and work on behalf of the people of Israel. His expression of joy through through dancing seemingly undignified to his wife, Mike, daughter of Saul. But whatever fault David may have had, his passion for serving God and seeking to do what pleases God never seemed to waver. And that's where we need to be. We all have faults, but we need to make sure that our that our passion and for serving God and seeking to do to please Him never waver. So we all serve God in different ways. So we see how David, the always here, David praised the Lord without the ark. Without the ark. He, he set up God's people in singing and dancing. But he said, David probably needs the ark. In Jerusalem, wanted to maintain his royal power. But at the same time, he genuinely loved the Lord and was grateful for God's presence among the work on behalf of the people of Israel. So that's the way we need to be. We need to make sure that we are doing God's will, pleasing God, praising Him. Okay, that was our Bible background. Let's get into our lesson and see what our lesson is talking about. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1 through 2, bringing up the ark. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1. They would again brought together all the able, able young men of Israel, 30,000. He and all the men went to Baal in Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim on the ark. Okay, let's look at our uh, commentary here and see what, just what those uh, uh, verses was talking about. 
that the Ark of the Covenant was constructed in the time of Moses at God's direction. It was representative of the place God would meet with Moses and give him the command is like word to follow. The art covered, the art covered including representation of two cherubim. The art contained the tablets of the covenant law and also a jar of metal. An error staff that had miraculous buttons. The ark represented the presence of the Lord God with his people. So it captured by the, the ark, let me read that again. The ark represented the presence of the Lord God with his people. So it captured by the Palestine in a battle was devastating, was a devastating blow. But God afflicted the Palestinians to the point where, to the point that they gave the ark back to Israel voluntarily by sending it on a chariot pulled by two cows. During the reign of, day of King Saul, it remained in Kerat and Jerem, a city also known as Baal, was located several miles to the northwest of Jerusalem. Now that David was established as leader, he made an arrangement to bring the ark to Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. So we're seeing here how this ark was constructed in the time of Moses under God's direction. So a representation of the place God would meet with Moses and give him his commandments that the Israelites will follow. So now the, so now the covenant, the ark is the only way to Jerusalem. So now that David was established as, as leader, he made a ram to bring the ark to Jerusalem, the capital city of Israel. So now we see that the ark of the covenant is on its way to Jerusalem. But all, all the time, David is steadily praising God and, and lifting up God's name. So let's move to our next segment. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 3, chapter 6, 3 to 5, a musical celebration. Look at, chapter, look at verse 3. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abendai, which was on the hill. Uriah and Enho, son of Abenda, were guiding the new cart. Verse 4 say the ark of the covenant, the ark of God on it, and Ohendo was walking in front of the in front of it. David and the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before the Lord. With cantonets, harp, lyrics, timbers, sundrums, and cymbals. So you see, while the Ark of Covenant was on his way into Jerusalem, David and the rest of his life was celebrating with all their might, like I say, with, before the Lord, and just praising God. Okay, let's look at let's look at our commentary and see just what those uh, verses were actually saying. Look at verse three and four. See, the ark was set on a cart from the journey. Uriah and Enho, son of the man, at whose house the ark had been kept, accompanied by the ark. These verses, in between the segment of today's study text. Tells of a three month hip cut and the process of getting the ark from Jerusalem, getting the ark from the house of Abenda to Jerusalem. We find even though the ark only had a relatively local journey to make, to make its trip to Jerusalem, 
was called from a national celebrate called for a national celebration. They participated in the event, and so did all Israel. We we need not to interfere with every man and woman and child lying the roadside, road, lying the road on the way to Jerusalem. Only that all 12 tribes were well represented. See, perhaps those who had too far to travel even celebrated the occasion at home. See, the nature of this party was largely music, musical, with a variety of instruments new. God, people were settled in the promised land. David, the charismatic king, was ruling. And now the Ark of the Covenant was truly coming home where it belonged. He said, they have the only way to Jerusalem with, with, the, with the Ark. I said, David and all of Israel would celebrate. So the roadside was lined up. And they were just celebrating. All the ones that was too far away, they celebrated in their home on occasions. And they were praising God. They was just with harps and cymbals, and, and they were having a good time, praising God. So that's what we need to be doing, saints. We need to be praising God in some fashion, praising and, 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 and lifting up his name in some kind of fashion. David and the Israelites was, was, uh, was praising God with instruments. And so we need to be praising God too. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Okay, let's look at our next segment here. At 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14 to 19. David's passion for worship. David's passion for worship. Look at verse 14. Wearing a linen apron, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might while he and all Israel was bringing up the ark of the, of the Lord with shouting and the sound of trumpets. They was really celebrating. They was celebrating unto the Lord. They say with, with shouting and the sound of trumpets. Verse 16 says, And the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David. Michael, daughter of Saul, Watch from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. And you know, probably some uh, wives today see uh, her husband praising God and just, just leaping and dancing. They probably despise their husband in their heart. But that didn't stop David. David kept praising God and dancing and shouting all over the place. Nigga, verse 17. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in the set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offering and fellowship offering before the Lord. After he had finished. Sacrifice and burnt offering and fellowshipping, he blessed the people in the same of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israel, both men and women, and all the people went to their home. And boy, they were shouting. They got the ark and covet now. It's all set in a tent. They said what David had pitched for it. And they shouted and they danced and they just had all kinds of fun. And so David had, David had, uh, had finished, but David brought all the ark of the covet and set in a place inside a tent that David had pitched for. And David sacrificed burnt offering and fellowship offering before the Lord. So they just praised and danced and 
and celebrated. And it said after he had finished sacrificing the burnt offering and fellowship offering, he blessed all the people in the name of the Almighty. Then he gave them all cake, loaves of bread, cake of date, and cake of raisin to each one of them. And they all, all of them went to their homes, celebrating. They, they was all full of cake and their hearts were filled. Is that where we need to be, though? We need to be celebrating unto the Lord, like I say, in some fashion. And so, like David, all he, he had faults, but that didn't stop him from celebrating the Lord. He was after the Lord's own heart. See, so it didn't make no difference what kind of fault David had. He says, praising and loving the Lord never wavered. And that's where we need to be, saints. Look at those ones standing in the background. Even though we got fault, we need to be praising God. And, and then our praising never waver. Okay. Now let's take a look at our, our Bible, our Sunday school book uh, commentary here and see just what unfolded in those verses. Look at verse 14, that King David seemed to do more than just organize the celebration and participate in it. Whether or not he was the official grand marshal of the parade, he prominent as king meant that all eyes was on him. A linen emperor was a garment worn by the high priest with a similar garment worn by others in service of God. David was clearly not a priest, but he had a heart of service for the Lord and his heart and the heart of a shepherd for God's people. So David was a, a, after God's own heart. He just praised God. Like I say, he didn't, he had faults, but that didn't stop him from praising God. They say his, his praising to God never wavered. And like I said earlier, that's what we need to be saying. We need to be praising God in some fashion. That our praising God would never waver. Look at verse 15 and 16. Is that as the ark made it its way into Jerusalem, also known as the city of David, accompanied by vocal praises and music, they were still celebrating with music. And David, wife Michael, saw him leaping and dancing and praising God in his opera, and she had. And she was embarrassed of him. Passionately displayed her praise for the Lord, or sometimes misunderstood. Sometimes praising and, and, and the praise of God is misunderstood. And that's true. And are dismissed by others. Verse 20 and 23 of the chapter tells us that Michael thought David behaved to be undignified for a king and that she remained barren due to her disrespect. So she said that, that all his praising and, 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 and for the Lord, he said that was undignified for a king. But that, and with that attitude she had, she remained bad. They would praise the Lord in spite of her. He praised and danced to the Lord. And we need to be doing that too, in some fashion. Nigga, verse 17. 
Say, David had prepared a tent for the ark to reside in. Once it was brought there, he sang by burnt offering and fellowship offering to God. This was another act of worship and respond to God's blessings. Verse 18 19 said, In the final act of worship, David blessed the people verbally by speaking and a benediction, and then gave them bread and fruit products. This was certainly an, an act of kindness but also a very practical one in a society where most everyone grew up on raisins. They grew up on raising their own fruit. And all the people that went back to their home, they were, must have been reflected on the goodness of God with full stomach and full heart. So all the dancing and shouting and and when Ark of the Covenant was coming back to Jerusalem, people lined the street side of the road, praying and dancing and just praising God with music. And when this all said and done, and he said David had, uh, David had prepared for the Ark of the Covenant residing in once we was brought there, he sacrificed burnt offering and fellowship offering to God. He said this was a, another act of worship and respond to God's blessing. That God has blessed David and David was praising him and giving him on his word. And said in verse 18 and 19, he said, and in final act of worship, David blessed the people verbally by speaking a benediction and then gave them bread and fruit products. He was gratefully thankful that they were helping him worship and praise God as the ark was coming into Jerusalem. See, there was certainly, this was a certainly an act of kindness, but also a very practical one in society where most everyone grew up on raising, on raising their own food. When all the people went back to their home, scripture say they was, must have been reflected on the goodness of God with a full stomach and full heart. But they had praised God and when they got through praying God, they had something to eat and stomachs were full and their hearts were full of praises and glorifying God. And see, say this is the way we need to be. We need to be praising God. You know, like David prayed to God, he said, we be, should be praying to God. We should be praying to God in some kind of fashion. In some way of fashion and look. And so, you know, there's no uh, uniform way to praise God. You know, different people praise God in different ways. Some are very emotional and, 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 and uh, imitated. So it may act like Mara and the women of Israel who took symbols and, and use dancing and song to express their praise to God. Some people may offer their praise in a quiet way. They may cry or they may become introspective or less in, 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 intimate. The Bible says Jesus praised God in some of the, in, in some of the ways we might expect. He went to the synagogue with a text we would now know as the Old Testament was taught and discussed. He also went to the temple where sacrifices were offered and more formal worship took place. But Jesus also provided an example of praise God in what we might consider a more quieter way. He praised God the way we live. He praised God the way he lived his life by focusing on the complete, completing his mission. 
Jesus praised God when he had, when he was on the cross and uttered his final word before he died. It's finished. And like I was saying, say there's no uniform way to praise God. Praising God comes from your heart. We don't praise God in no traditional sense way. We all praise God different. Praising God comes from the heart. How do you praise God? Do you join others with song and dance? Do you turn your heart, turn your thoughts inward and tune your heart to God? the object of your praises. Whatever way you offer your praises to God, make it the crest expression possible of your gratitude for God when he had extended to you. There's no uniform way to praise God. They would praise it, God with instruments, symbols. So we need to be praising God in some fashion. And see this lesson here was talking about the Ark of the Covenant coming back to Jerusalem. But David praised God without it. He praised and danced to the praise of the Lord. His wife didn't like it. She despised him with it in her heart. But that doesn't stop David from praising the Lord. And David Fox, he didn't stop praising God. He praised God to the highest. And the triple says his praise of God never wavered. So we got Fox too saying we should be praising God, and then I will praise the God never waver as well. There is no uniform way to praise God. I hope that you got something out this lesson. You understand how we should be praising God. And let our praise of God never waver. Look at the one standing in the background. You can be part of this praising God. All you got to do is trust God and believe that. God sent his son down on this earth to die for our sins and the sins of the world. He went to the grave, and on the third day, God raised him from the dead. And all we got to do is believe and have faith that this all took place. And you can be part of this too. Hope you enjoyed this Sunday school lesson this morning. Take it with you. Continue to praise God without waving, no matter what kind of fault we all have seen, and come short of the glory of God. But let's continue to praise God and lift his name, and let our praise never cease. Let us pray. Most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father, I'm grateful this morning, dear Lord, that you left your word behind. That you just showed us how to praise you, dear Lord. Let's praise you without ceasing. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm just grateful and thankful that you left all this behind so we'll know how to, know how to conduct our life. Have faith and believe that you are the, the Christ. Lord, just be with us as we go through this day. Bless us. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the praises, and all the glory. For it all, it's all the praises belong to you. You are worthy to be praised. Amen.